what you can see here on the wall is just our assortment of my favorite bits. Um, you'll see everything from a ring snaffle to a shank with a twisted wire mouthpiece on it. And the thing that I've learned over the years is that if you treat horses' mouths as individual, just like you treat them as individuals, you're much more successful um, because every horse balances different and a bit is a line of communication between your hands and the horse. And it's very important that the horse be comfortable with the bit that you have in their mouth so that the communication is successful. So this is just an assortment. You can see how many we have and um, I think almost every trainer you will see has an assortment like this and it's because we have to treat them as individuals. When we're starting our young walking horses, uh, we choose from two different types of, of smooth snaffles. Uh, my preference is a smooth snaffle that has copper on the mouthpiece. I think it helps keep the horse's mouth um, moist and they like the taste of it. Um, and it's important from day one that you make that horse comfortable in its mouth and what you have in its mouth. So we play around a little bit. This is an O-ring snaffle with a smooth mouthpiece with copper inlaid on it. That's one of my favorite bits. I like a round snaffle, an O-ring, better than I do a D-ring. Uh, however, we have certain colts that like the solid aspect of the D-ring. And I'll show you that. Um, this is a D-ring. It's kind of self-explanatory. You can see the side of it. It moves just like um, the other snaffle except for it's, it does not rotate through there. So you're actually getting a different contact with this bit on the side of the horse's mouth. Now this specific bit has copper inlaid pieces. It's not a solid copper mouthpiece. So a little bit different um, feel, a uh, little bit different uh, copper inlay on it, but basically the, the same philosophy, a nice smooth soft mouthpiece to start them out with. My next favorite bit is a flat O-ring copper twisted wire mouthpiece. And this is almost the same thickness in the mouthpiece as the first two uh, smooth snaffles that I showed you. What I find is that on a horse that's getting maybe just a little bit heavy in my hands, that with the twisted wire I can lighten them up a little bit, but yet it's not real abrasive and I find that it makes a good bit for my amateurs to ride in that may not have the most consistent uh, soft hands. It uh, is a, a mild bit, but of course just like any other bit out there, it can be abusive in the wrong hands. So please keep that in mind. The next bit that I have is, is uh, another O-ring snaffle. However, this is a very, very thin mouthpiece. And I caution people on using this because we use this on horses that have not had a very good education when it comes to their mouth. And they have become very, very stiff. Um, practically try and pull it out of your hands. And we use this to go back and soften them up. And unfortunately, sometimes we end up getting what I call raspberries on the sides of the mouth but in my opinion it's a necessary uh, situation that occurs when we're going back and we're softening up the horses in a snaffle bit. Now after we achieve some softness with this bit we will go back to the larger twisted wire snaffle with the copper mouthpiece because this is not something that you want to have to use on a daily basis. This next bit is a, it's a miler bit with the Comfort Snaffle mouthpiece. Uh, this is my favorite bit to transition from a snaffle bit into. The thing that I really like about the Myler bits is the fact that each side works individually. You don't have the pinching effect that a normal shank bit because the center is locked. This is completely able to rotate all the way around. Um, 
the mouthpiece on this also has the copper inlays on it which most of my bits do and this is a, a very very good bit to transition from a snaffle bit into a shank um, I find the horses are less abrasive with it and um, probably 95% of the horses I transition out of a snaffle bit will go into a miler bit of this type. This is just another version of the miler. It's got a little bit more band to the mouthpiece on the sides. It's a little bit more advanced bit um, for a horse that you're, you're asking for just a little bit more feel. And when I say feel, I mean the collection aspect that the shank bit provides you. But it works exactly the same. Each side can completely work separately from the opposite. This next bit is also a miler. Um, it has an elevated centerpiece. Um, and the reason why I have this bit is some horses, uh, the way their tongues are in their mouth, uh, they need a little bit more room. This bit allows a little bit more room for their tongue to be in there. This bit also has the copper inlays on it, so once again we're keeping the, the mouth wet and comfortable. This bit works exactly the same as my other milers. It uh, hinges in the middle and it's, it's able to work um, each side on the opposite. I use this on horses that tend to be a little bit heavy in my hands um, with the other miler bit and uh, I've had really good success with it. Now this, this bit right here is still a snaffle bit mouthpiece but you'll notice that it's, uh, it's jointed in the middle. The milers are able to rotate in the middle by the way that it's made. Now this specific bit does not. So when you're applying pressure, the mouthpiece actually presses down on the tongue as well as applying pressure from the curb chain on the bottom side of the horse's chin. So um, if horses do not like the milers, this is usually my choice. It's a, a standard shank um, and it's, it's a mild bit uh, that allows the horse to be flexible um, and, and gives you a little bit of collection, uh, you know, on a different mouthpiece. Now this next bit is a wonder bit, uh, very, very typical walking horse type bit. Um, <clears throat> it's originally designed to be a gag bit, and the reason why it serves as a gag bit is that the mouthpiece rotates on the ring itself. So uh, as you're applying pressure with the reins, this mouthpiece actually moves up and down on this ring and kind of it applies pressure to the top of the head with the head stall as well as flexing the horse in its jaw. And you can use this with a very, very loose curb and use it as a true gag or the way I like to use it is with a very snug or tight curb and I use it to elevate the horses. They seem to come back into my hands very well with this. And last but not least is what I call the typical walking horse bit which is a straight shank with a twisted wire mouthpiece. Um, this is about uh, the most severe bit that I use and it's because of the straightness of the shank and it's because of the straightness of the shank that when the pressure is applied it really puts the torque on the horse's mouth. Um, it is not my preference to use this bit however I do have horses that balance correctly with this and I don't have to pull on them. And my ultimate goal with a bit, no matter what it is, is for the horse to be balanced properly. When a horse is balanced properly, they're going to have the best gait and the most head shake. We use protective leg gear on all our horses, um, especially because we do a lot of round pen work. And they're called splint boots and they just protect the splint bone and we like to use them on all the horses.
All right, so we're in the round pen, and this is a three-year-old filly um, that I have a smooth snaffle bit on. And what I'm going to show real quick is just some of the things that we do before we ever get on the horse. For me, I think it's very, very important that you teach the horse the basics, the ABCs and the one, two, threes before you ever get on the horses. So part of that is learning to be flexible, both laterally and vertically. And there are several steps that we go through. The first, obviously, when you first put the bit in the horse's mouth, they don't know what it is. So I'm going to stand kind of in the same position that I would be sitting in, in the saddle, and ask this horse to bend its head to me. And I'm just going to hold, and I'm going to ask for it to get soft. I'm going to set my hand, whether it's on my leg or on the saddle, because I want the horse to get soft laterally. And I do this first from the ground. Um, it makes it a whole lot easier than we get on there. As you see, this is a direct pull on the side of the horse's mouth with the snap of it. There is no shank, so we're not putting any compression on the bottom of the horse's chin. The leather strap that I have underneath it is not acting as a curb because there's no shank. The reason behind the leather strap, or you'll see some of mine have horsehair tassel straps on the bottom, is simply when we're pulling the horse's head around the side, it keeps the other side of the bit from pulling through the horse's mouth. So, right now I feel like she's, she's good and comfortable lateral to the left. I'm just going to go to the right and just check the right side. I want it to be the same. And I'm teaching her to do this from both sides so that I can go on to the next step. Part of making a mouth on a horse is making their body as well. So there's a process that we go through that you can do it from the saddle. I find it much more effective to do it from the ground. It's important to always check your equipment before you start working the young horses so that you don't break something unintentionally and create a bad habit. So I've got this tied back to my saddle, back up to the rein, and then I tie it off. Now I'm going to ask the horse to move around the round pin, move its hindquarters and its front end. And what this does is that it teaches the horse to follow that direct rein as well as pivoting front and back. And I have found that good lateral flexion helps with vertical flexion, which is your end headset. So this is the basics. they will get dizzy and they can fall down. And so you don't want to get you hurt or your horse hurt. The rule of thumb is if the, the head is tied back to the right, you'll be moving to the left or counterclockwise in the round pin. If the head is tied to the left, you'll be moving to the right or clockwise.
Okay, so once again, when I release this, I don't want her to pull it out of my hand. I want her to stay soft and stay so flexible to the side. So I'm going to hold it here before I release her. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and release her just like I was in the saddle. Okay, the next step that we try and do is we try and create some vertical softness. And how I go about doing it to begin with is I stand here with them and I, I'm going to set my hands and I'm going to wait for them to release on the bit, just like that. The vertical flexion of the nose. This is I want to back up. There. And I just ask her to just flex her nose in right here from the ground. Just want it to be soft there. There. As soon as there is the slightest try or the slightest effort, it's it's in just of utmost importance that you release so that the horse learns that there is a reward. For every action, there is a reward for them. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm getting on my colts for protection of them running off or lunging or getting out of control when I first am getting onto them is I like to bend their heads around to my leg before I get on them. I'm going to keep the horse's head bent. You can never do too much lateral flexion. Okay? Now, you can see the bit is going to work on a direct rein. And ultimately, if man had not made a rule that these horses had to go in a different bit when they got to a certain age, I would ride all of mine in a snaffle. I think you have as much or more control with a snaffle than any other bit. So right now I'm going to walk her off and I'm just going to ask for some vertical collection. I just set my hands and I let her come to my hands. I don't want, I don't want to pull. Now, I find that if you have one that is pulling hard or is not responding to getting the softness from you setting your hands, if you break it up into a left-right position and get the softness that way, the horse learns to be soft vertically. And it's very difficult to achieve the type of softness and flexion in the pole that I'm looking for if you're doing it in a shank bit. Now that's not to say that you can't do it. I just feel that the snaffle bit and the direct pull is much more effective. Okay. Go the other way. I want this filly to be rounded and follow the direction that I'm giving her with the lead rein, the left rein. You see how I'm getting the, the softness and the suppleness in my hands? I'm not having to hold this horse. And that's because we have taught her to respect the bridle from the ground. Now, if I ask her to stop, I just quickly release, but it's a direct rank. I usually spend no less than 30 days work time, closer to 60 to 90 days on basics in the round pen, which is bending and flexing, softness both vertically and laterally. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to ask this filly to bend laterally. You can see I'm not having to pull. She's very respectful of it. This takes time. 
It isn't achieved overnight. The old saying, Rome was not built in a day, is very true when you're building a mouth on a horse. This is one of the Myler bits, and I'll just take it off real quick so you can see the mouthpiece. It's one of the ones that I showed earlier. Just real mild. It's got the copper inlays on the on the back of it. I'm sure you can't see them, but they're there. And um, I like to adjust all of my shank bits to where I have what I call one wrinkle. And I don't like a very, very tight curb. So I usually have my, my thumb underneath here to allow for it to uh, have some space to, you know, not just be bound down tight on it. And this mare has just been in this bit for about a week. And so basically she is very educated in a snaffle bit, has a lot of lateral flexion, has vertical flexion. And she is going to be our Western horse example by her head carriage. And I'm gonna show you how the bit helps us um, for her to go on a loose rein and to carry her head in a manner that is specific to the Western uh, head carriage of our breed. All right, as I just sit here, because she's making a transition, I'm gonna do the same thing with my hands that I did with the snaffle. I'm gonna ask for her to come back soft. You'll see her tuck her nose. I give instantly. There you go. It's a good... You're using the bit in the reins as a, a means of communication to the horse. Uh, you're not using them as a way to, you know, control more as a communication. So as I step off, I want her to step off on a nice loose rein. I don't want to have to hold on her. Now as I'm going along, um, you notice she's on a loose rein. I'm not having to hold her. And part of that is because she has learned not to pull on my hands from all of the lateral and vertical flexion that I do with her. As I ask her to step up, you see that she is on a nice loose rein. If I have to ask her, I ask and I get it softened in the bit and then I release it. I don't want to see this type of a hold. You notice she's not consistent with her head. If you're having to hold this hard, she can't go forward. So she's comfortable. I don't have to pull on her. She respects that the that my hand communicating through my bit is telling her to stay at a nice, relaxed pace. Now, her head carriage is just a little bit up right now. Keep in mind she's in transition. So I'm lifting my hand using the shank to ask her to drop her head. What I am doing through this bit is we are teaching her to balance on her own. She doesn't need me to hold her. She doesn't need me to pull on her. She respects where it is. Now because she's not pulling on my hand, she's loose in her pole area and it allows her to have a very nice fluid head shape. Down, there. So I'm using the bit to communicate I want your head to be soft. There. Nice give. Nice give. There we go. One more. She's still in the learning process. Okay? This bit in particular helps me with uh, getting the horse relaxed in its pole and its neck and its shoulders so that ultimately we have a nice rounded balanced look. Um, I'm not using this for elevation or uh, to get more action with. It's primarily to go on a nice loose forward going rein. This bit right here is what's considered a wonder bit. Uh, just like I discussed before, you can use it as a gag, which with a really loose curb, 
you can see that the mouthpiece rotates on the ring. I don't specifically use it as a gag. I use it as an elevator. So I have a much more snug curb, which in turn lifts the horse's head. Um, although he is in a Western saddle, he is more of an English going horse than the previous horse. And uh, you'll be able to see that and how this bit helps lift him um, and balance uh, for more of an English profile than the first horse. As you can see that with the, this bit, I'm able to lift the horse's head up. It helps him balance differently. You really have to determine the strong point of your horse, whether it's profile English or Western, where you teach the horse to balance. You can see that it's very loose. 